Hello! You are really lucky. Why? Because you're about to learn how to play chess. Chess is a really, really old game, almost 2,000 years old. Chess is a game where two players play against each other on a chessboard made up of 64 squares, an 8x8 grid. Each player gets a bunch of different pieces that they use to try and go after the other player's king. What is it called when you get the other side's king? Checkmate! You're right. Today I'm going to teach you about the different pieces, how they move, and how to checkmate. Each of the six different kinds of pieces has its own shape for moving. Most pieces cannot move through other pieces. Only the knight can jump over anyone who gets in his way. Also, no piece can ever share a square with another piece. This square isn't big enough for the two of us. Sorry. However, they can be moved to take the place of an opponent's piece. That's how you capture the enemies. Now, let's go meet our team. The king is the most important piece, since losing him means the end of the game. But he's also one of the weakest. So very often, he needs his friends to protect him. The king can move one square in any direction, up, down, to the sides, and diagonally. See, this would be one move. Now, after my opponent's move, I can go again, for example, here. How many moves will it take me to get to the edge of the board? Three. That's right. The king may never move himself onto a square where he could be captured. There's no losing on purpose. If your opponent ever moves their king onto a square where you can take it, don't grab the king and laugh. <laughs> I win! Instead, you should explain why they can't move there. Then your opponent can put the king back where it was and choose a different move. Let's test you. Can the white king move here? No. Good. How about here? Yes, very good. And here? Nope. I think you've got it, so let's keep going. When another piece threatens to capture the king, it's called check. When there is no way for the king to escape check, it is called checkmate. As stated before, that is how you win. There are only three ways a king can get out of check. Move out of the way, block the check with another piece, or capture the piece that's checking you. At the end of this video, when you know the other pieces, we'll show some examples of this. If a king cannot escape checkmate, then the game is over. Customarily, the king is not captured or removed from the board. The game is simply over. The queen is the most powerful piece. Like the king, she can move in any one straight direction. Forward, backward, sideways, or diagonally. But unlike the king, the queen is very speedy. In fact, she can move as far as you like, as long as she does not move through any other pieces. <coughs> Hold on, and like with all other pieces, if the queen captures an opponent's piece, that's the square she stops on. All right, 30 seconds, super intense practice. Can the queen move here? No way, she doesn't have a teleporter to go anywhere. She has to follow a straight line. Okay, how about here? Yes, good. Can she capture this piece? You bet. How about this one? Yeah, him too. And this one? Wow, the queen is pretty strong, right? All right, let's test how fast she is. Can she get to the top of the board in one move? Yes. And what square would she land on? That one. How many moves would it take her to go to the left side? Two. Test complete. She's very fast. The rook is also sometimes called a castle. Some of my friends like to call it a tower of power. That's because usually rooks look like towers or castles and they're pretty strong too. The rook moves much like the queen as far as it wants along straight lines but only forward, backward, and to the side. Easy peasy, let's get right to practice. Since practice makes good, that rook right there, can he move here? Can he move there? Can he catch this piece? How long to get to that side of the board? 
Very good. Next is the bishop. Bishop is the other half of the queen. It moves as far as it wants, but only diagonally. When I was a kid, my brother and I used to stack a bishop on top of a rook to be an extra queen. In the starting position, the bishop sits next to the king and queen like advisors. You start with one bishop on a light square and one bishop on a dark square, and you will notice only moving on diagonals, each bishop is stuck on the color square that it starts on. Let's move this bishop around and try to get him onto a dark square. Wow, that was totally impossible. Luckily, his buddy is here to cover the squares he can't. Bishops work well together because each covers the squares the other one can't. What time is it now? That's right, test time. That bishop right there. Can he move here? Correct. Can he move there? Excellent. What about this other bishop over here? Can he go there? Eh, eh. Nope, but he can go here, can't he? Right? Excellent. The knight is our next study. The chess piece for a knight, it looks like a horse. Now really, the horse is supposed to have a rider who is brave or not so brave, but it's harder to design that way. Sometimes people will tell you it's called a knight, not a horse, but it's okay with me if you want to call the knight a horsey. Knights move in a very different way from other pieces, going two squares in one direction, and then one more move at a 90 degree angle, just like the shape of an L. Try to imagine every square this knight could move to. Now, we'll start showing them. Knights are also the only pieces that can move over other pieces. Pawn in the way? Enemy rook in the way? No problem! People often say knights hop because of that special ability to hop over other pieces. Check out these knight hops. Yippee! Here I go! Now I'm going to capture someone! Whee! Okay, now wait! You notice something very special about those hops? The knights change square colors with every move. Remember that, there'll be a test later. Now, the pawn. Let's meet the pawn. This is a pawn. This is also a pawn. And this is a pawn, but this is a pawn. Not a pawn! Pawn is spelled P-A-W-N. The pawn is the smallest piece on the board, and the slowest, but it has a lot of potential. Half of your starting team is pawns, so it's very important to understand how to use these little guys. Even though they're not very strong, pawns are unusual because they move in one way, but capture in a different way. When they move, they just go forward, but when they capture, they go diagonally. Pawns can only move forward one square at a time, except for their very first move, when they can move forward two squares or one. Pawns can only capture one square diagonally in front of them. They can never move or capture backwards. Because pawns move and capture differently, the pawn is the only piece that can get blocked by your pieces or enemy pieces. If there's another piece directly in front of a pawn, he can't move past, or he can't capture that piece either. Of course, your pawns would never capture your pieces, but that's another story. Okay? Now, pawns may be small. Pawns may be weak. I hope you enjoyed this video so far. To keep watching the rest of this video, you will need to have your parents help you get a gold membership. Once you're a gold member, then you'll be able to watch all the Chess Kid videos. You can also enjoy tens of thousands of chess puzzles, unlimited games and tournaments, computer training, and much, much more. Get a gold membership, and I promise we'll do our best to unlock the secrets of chess for you and help you get better.